I felt called to plant a church years ago. So we probably started having conversations. I probably started here hearing some of Scott's heart for eventually planting a church, probably 97 or 98. That's how long. <laughs> I had become very close friends with Scott and I knew that it was on his heart to eventually, you know, start as a church, whether that would be under the covering of a, a previous church or on our own. Summer of 2011, June of 2011, we were in Arizona with our kids and Janelle began to tell the story of our, how God brought us together and all of that. And, and in that moment, I was the light bulb moment. We're supposed to start a church. We're supposed to start a church for people to have a fresh start. You know, no matter what's gone on in their life, to be a, a place of refuge. And I called Scott and he said, hey, by the way, I'm going to be starting a church and it's going to be awesome. And they moved back from Loveland down here so that they could be closer to the church. So they, they made life decisions around, around this. So that was pretty monumental. So one day I get a phone call and Scott said, we're doing it. We're starting a church. And I said, well, what church? He goes, well, I think it's going to be called Novation. And he explained the meaning, which is awesome. Eventually, we stepped out of our role of being at this big mega church. And I told Scott, we'd like to be part of this Novation thing. I don't even know what this means. We were at Faith Bible, and it was Darcy and Annette Narnins told us we we're having a meeting outside. And that's when we found out that Scott Applegate was going to start his new church. And so me and Audrey decided to go out there and we've been there from day one. And it's been amazing ever since. It's just such a great place. There's so many great people here, good hearts, and we all serve a great God. We've been around since the very first interest meeting that was held in the backyard of Bob, Bob and Lisa Cooley's house <laughs> and next to the pool. Uh, so we went back and talked to Pastor George and, and I had him pray about it. said, if you give your blessing, we'll do it. If you don't feel it's right, then we won't do it. And he said, you're supposed to do it. So we began having interest meetings um, the summer of 2011. So after Pastor George gave us the blessing to start a church, um, I called Woodrow Wilson Academy and the assistant principal at the time I said, you know, we're going to start a church up in that area. Uh, would you be interested in letting us rent it from you? And she said, well, I'll ask the principal, but um, I seriously doubt we'd be interested in that. And literally five minutes later, I got a phone call from the head principal, Tim Matlick. And he said, I'd love to have a church in here. So Octo the, the October of 2011, I would work all week at faith and go to church on Sunday at faith. And then we would have Sunday night meeting at Woodrow Wilson. So there was, we had our first one and did a little worship and cast vision for what the church was gonna be like. Then it morphed into what a church, church service could be like. I mean, it was very scaled back. There was an acoustic guitar, <laughs> you know, and, but we always fellowship. We always made it about having, you know, food and stuff. And so then December, of 2011 was my last days at Faith, and our first service was January 12th, 2012. I remember that because the week before was the famous Tim Tebow game against Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I was in the janitor's closet getting something, and I hear the whole people that were there erupt because Tebow had thrown the touchdown pass, and I missed it. So, you know, we used to rent a gym. Um, on us for Sundays <laughs> and some classrooms, um, which was a wonderful situation, uh, really was. Every Sunday we'd have to set up and tear down church. Every Sunday morning, starting early, bringing all that stuff out on cap carts, setting up the sound, setting up the board every single week. It was chaotic. We lived by walkie-talkies. It was a bonding time for people to serve together. It, it created a bondship between the, the, the men and the women that served. Um, I'm pretty sure we'd be there at least two hours before. Our vision has always been to be a modern expression of what the early church was about in Acts chapter two. Prayer, to fellowship, the breaking of bread, and the, they did life together, and the Lord added to their number daily. 
This past year after Hurricane Ida hit my hometown, I had so many people messaging me like, hey, I just want to check on your family. Hey, how's your family doing? How's your hometown? And that meant so much to me that people cared. And this church really is about that. They're really about caring and just loving on each other. Be in a church that is about discipleship and making disciples who make disciples, growing together. did all these years in the school and then it was the school had a project the big they were building a cap two-story cafeteria and more classrooms so all our storage and stuff was going to go away we were headed for a problem and at the same time though there was a stirring maybe we need a permanent location so when we started looking for for spaces i remember there were times where scott and i would go um two places i remember there's just a place over here by that jimmy john's um, before they tore it down, there was a little space, and we walked in trying to see what that space would look like. And we would we would walk into an empty building and go, "Oof, there's no way that we can make this work." And we did that several times. Walking into this building, it was an empty shell. It was huge, and looking at it from a perspective, me, I'm a puzzle person. I can look at it as a puzzle piece. How could we put a wall here? How could we make this work? Coming into an empty shell, that was amazing. When, when we came in, this felt like this would be the place w that would make Novation a home. The first service here, yeah. we didn't have the drum tank like we do now. So I hit the drums the first time during the practice, and it was so obnoxious loud. <laughs> Um, Adam Goldberg came up with the idea to build a drum tank, and it's worked out spectacularly ever since. The building that we're in now was through a, a guy that we had already talked to about another space a few years back. The day that we came as a group to, to pray over the building as the skeleton was up, the sheetrock was halfway up, the beams were up, we could see the inside of these walls, looking at the screws, looking at the drywall dust, looking at the insulation, and being able to pray over them, knowing the scriptures in these walls, knowing there's Bibles inside of these walls, knowing that how many lives are gonna be walking through these doors, how many lives are gonna be touched, how many people potentially would be giving their hearts to Christ, how many people would be making that ultimate dedication of saying, you know what, I've given everything to this world, now I'm gonna give it up to Christ. We're that beginning, like Novation says, a new beginning. When we, when we were at Woodrow Wilson, baptisms were um, done at one of our local uh, congregation members' pools, and it was it was pretty cool. He had a he had a great setup. The pool was always warm. He'd always, we'd always do a church barbecue at his house, potluck kind of thing, and we would set it up that way. We would have um, one of the worship leaders would come out with a guitar, do a little bit of worship, and the people would come in through the stairs, and we would baptize. Uh, and my um, son and daughter were baptized in the in this congregation members pool. It's awesome. We actually do baptisms in the sanctuary during live services. I love it. And I got to be part of the first um, group of folks baptized actually in Novation Church. And, I was baptized alongside a lot of the Kavanaugh kids as well. That was special too because the Kavanaugh's were instrumental in us coming to Novation. Novation means the changing of one contract for another, a new beginning. And in my situation, having been an atheist who was sort of fed up at the world and at his wit's end, I needed that new beginning and I appreciate belong before you believe and just the attitudes of novation, the, f the family feel, the, the relationships, the, the food. It's just an, an amazing place and an amazing family, an amazing group of people. We exist to love God and to love people. 
And uh, that was really emphasized in that first week we were here, more so than probably any church we had been in for a long time. And what I saw was a very tight group of people who valued relationships, enjoyed being around each other and did it a lot. Um, and, and really allowed everyone to be themselves, which is really neat. I think that connection happens very naturally. And I think it's telling that, you know, the people who've left Novation that have heard this from, they're still a big part of my life. People very visible, you know, up on stage who were open with their struggles. Mm -hmm. And like, look, none of us are perfect, but we're here for the perfect one. March 8th of 2020 was our last in service. I remember when everybody was hearing about this thing called COVID. It looked like overreactions, but something I appreciated about the church early on, we treated it as severe as it looked. And I think that was right. COVID was challenging on all of us in many different ways, certainly in the business world and the marketplace, but a lot of church churches really suffered from COVID as well. I preached a sermon from my kitchen table. Janelle and the team were able to, you know, you guys rocked it as we grew in our, our online presence because we didn't really have an online presence, it was just audio. When COVID hit, I think we did a phenomenal job. I think it brought us together as a team. Learned a lot. I mean, there were times when we were scrambling on a Saturday to figure out how to do something that was detrimental to Sunday and, and you know, just coming together as a team and and uh, working through problems together. And it's it's a family, it's neat. Everybody has a servant's heart here that I, you know, I'm on the AV and worship team now and, you know, nobody has to have their own way. We work together as a, as a, as a group. And uh, I think it just, you know, to the larger group of innovation, that, that's what, uh, that's what sticks out, is that we're a team. We love each other, and we're for one another, and we don't let little things divide us. We had to get really creative during COVID, because <laughs> we were all filming in different places, the same song, and having to listen to it in your ear while singing, and, and at the same time, also wanting to not lose that worship aspect. So I remember being in my room and having to put up like a little, my own little blanket kind of black backdrops that have something behind me and just praying like, okay, God, like even though this feels weird and I'm by myself in this room trying to harmonize to this thing in my ear, it was kind of craziness. We still had that worship aspect and we'd still kind of talk to each other like, oh man, this song felt so good today and everything. And then even sometimes we talk about how like that song, even though we weren't all together, it's exactly what we needed that day also. And so God working even through the weird times. And as Bradley said, weird church is better than no church. I have never been on a live, live stream like that before. And so having to watch myself, um, it was it was definitely weird. My It was enjoyable to watch it with my husband and son because being at home and watching it, I, I was always on stage while they were down there and we were never worshiping together. And so it was really cool having that aspect for the first time we were worshiping together and my son would cuddle up to me and sing the song and that was just a precious moment. I remember crying the first time he was singing um, one of the songs of uh, his favorite song, Revelation song, and I'm just crying hearing my son worship because I never got to experience that. But then for my aspect, it was extremely weird having to hear myself on TV. And of course, I heard everything that I did wrong. We put together worship sessions throughout the week and um, anybody that, that knows a little bit about recording music uh, would be uh, would, would understand the the hurdles we had to jump through. We had musicians that were recording themselves playing their parts alone in their house into their cell phone. Um, I'm sure you can imagine that's not the best microphone to use for that application. Um, but it just so happened that um, I'm an audio enthusiast and I have a studio at my house and um, it's COVID so I had an abundance of time as well. So we were able to, to put that together, polish it up and um, learned a lot about 
cutting video and stuff like that that's kind of prepared me to do this project even which is neat every time I, I get involved with something at Novation I you can feel the Lord behind it you just kind of know you know you're following Jesus I'd record the sermon on like Wednesday and then you guys would put it all together and get it ready for for Sunday and the worship team doing from their iPhones and iPads and it all coming together, you know, and then then it, we got to a pretty good rhythm. But I, the blessing in disguise of that is, is now we've been able to have an online presence. I, I saw Easter Sunday of 2020 um, when you know, people weren't in person going to church. We had well over three, three, four hundred people watch that that service that we put together. We had to go through this period of not meeting in person, and it was extremely challenging because so much of the interaction that we benefit from happens from being face to face and hugging and you know worshiping together. Our youth ministry has blown up since COVID. That, that I can't control. Our numbers have blown up. I'm averaging 35 to 40 now. Uh, beautiful things of Novation is just exactly that. That. We have the spectrum of the um, Christian faith re uh, represented, in a sense, and um, that we all are coming together in unity to one goal. And like, I think that's beautiful. The church doors may have been closed, but the church never closed, because the church is not a building. The, the church is the people. Is uh, what does the next five years look like for Novation? That's a lot of pressure. Is it? I don't know. Yeah. I, I really don't. Um, I think we're seeking the Lord together. I've been challenging on Sundays. This isn't just about me or somebody. It's what does God want us to do? I think a greater impact in the community through love and loving our neighbors is a, a thing. But continue to grow. You know, meet people, reach people, and however means takes to reach people with the gospel and let people know how amazing the Father truly is and the Son together. So, yeah. Hi, my name is Kevin, and then as all of you may know me, and I'm here in Novation since almost five years and a half now. And then Novation means for me like home, everything. Because since the first day I stepped into Novation up to now, it's all been a blessing for me and my family. And then maybe sometime I'll have like a minute or time to witness what Novation have done for me so far. And then I will let you know all about my story and then the love story with me and my version. Thank you very much. I'm Josiah Dennis and I'm part of the Novation Store. Hey Novation, it's the Richardsons coming at you 1,500 miles away from Myrtle Beach. We still feel like we're part of the congregation. Novation is that important to us because of the fellowship and the way the message is delivered to us. I am Annalise. And I'm Kara Trichler, and we are part of the Novation story. <laughs> Hi, we are the Burns family, and together we are, we are part, part of, of the Novation <laughs> story. <laughs> I am Adrian Covert, and I am part of the Novation story. Hi, I'm Kim. And I'm Debbie. And we are part of the Novation Story. Theo Picas, we're part of the Novation Story. I'm Brian Sump, and I am part of the Novation Story. I'm Jim Sparrow, and I'm part of the Novation Story. I am Christy Patrick, and I am a part of the Novation Story. Hi, we're Cheryl Lynn and Rod Euchert, and we're part of the Novation family. I can't believe it's been 10 years since Help Planet Church, and I wasn't even a follower of Christ yet. In that time, I served as a youth leader. I've been on two mission trips and volunteered in several capacities. My job keeps me away most of the time, but when I walk through those doors, it's like being home with family. 
My name's Troy Eggers, and I'm part of Innovation Story. My name is Steve Walker, and I'm truly honored to be a part of the Innovation Story. My name's Chris Ingalls. I am part of the Novation story.